Yes, please. What do you need? Yeah, let's take care of this. Thank you, sir. Sir, you are uh, assistant commandant in the CASF. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where are you posted now? Sir, I am posted at Kandla Port, Gujarat. Kandla Port, Gujarat. Okay, you are posted in uh, Port? Yes, sir. Can you briefly tell us about uh, what sort of duties you are assigned to? Sir, uh, I am AC Port Operations over there, Assistant Command in Port Operations. So, who will look after access control? My major thing, uh, task over there is access control at the gates. And also, I am supposed to prevent the crime and uh, intelligence gathering and processing the in information. You have already, uh, you have uh, worked as a lecturer. Yes. Which, which subject you have did? Sir, I have taught uh, polity, polity and governance. Polity and governance? Yes. You are already working in uh, uniform service, then why do you have opted for the big director post as first uh, uh, Sir, I like uniform forces, uh, but I feel my temperament is more suitable for civilian jobs. Uh, where uh, I'll have direct contact with the people and uh, where I feel, uh, so that is the main thing, so my temperament uh, suits more for the civilian jobs. Okay, Joseph. Um, Prashant, what is the difference between governance and government? So, government is a structure, so wherein we have different organs of government, wherein governance is a process that the government carries. So I can say government is a structure which we can see. Governance is uh, that process which we can't see that the government produces. And uh, government is a is an arm of state, whereas governance can be done by even NGOs. Governance can be done by many organizations which are not part of government. Um, you have JRF in public administration? Yes. Sir. Okay. Can you name one theorist of public administration, whose principle you think you can apply if you become, say, district collector? Sir, uh, for me, I feel McGregor is that theorist, okay. whom I feel I can, uh, there is a lot of relevance for administration. Okay. So, McGregor comes up with this theory X and theory Y, where he categorizes the employees or workers in an organization into two categories, under theory X and theory Y. So, the theory X uh, tells us that workers don't have the propensity to work, they have to be forced, they have to use stick. Whereas theory Y says that uh, workers are inclined to work, so they like work, given proper conditions they will work. So for theory Y, incentives play a major role. Okay, and in a typical district uh, administration setting, how would you, you would differentiate your staff into theory X yes. theory Y? So in any department, uh, so we have, uh, we were given a lot of uh, employees whom you have to work and we don't have any option, it's not a private organization where we can fire. So in that lot, first we have to profile the uh, employees, so workers who are willing to work, the employees who are willing to work. So for them we can give creative work without any timelines. And there might be some employees who are not willing to work, for them we can give work with timelines. Because, because there is a timeline, they are supposed to work and complete the work within the timelines. <coughs> One of the functions of a deputy collector is also the law and order of the his revenue division. Yeah. Yes. The police also takes care of the law and order. So, is there any difference between the way a deputy collector understands the law and order and a police sees law and order? So, the deputy collector for for a deputy collector uh, maintaining law and order is a function that can, uh, that is a, is a necessary function for development. For a police, uh, law and order is the main stake for the police. Law and order is the main staple for the police. For them, law and order is about preventing a crime. Law and order is about uh, uh, making sure that uh, the criminal activity is less. Law and order is the, is the function in itself. For, whereas for a deputy collector, law and order is meant for development. 
so the purpose of uh, the way the deputy collector sees law and order is different from the police so uh, both uh, both of their ends is set and do you think that the law and order uh, the state of law and order uh, in our districts and in our country in general have come to a point where they are needing development so of course sir. Uh, the development which we are seeing uh, today is because we are having law and order so we don't see chaos in our country we see an issues of law and order but we are not seeing chaos we don't see any person randomly coming into a mall and killing hundreds of people or tens of people an indian citizen doing that so so law and order is such an act where we can't see it we can see the benefits of law and order but we can't appreciate it unless until the law and order breaks we can't appreciate it so the present development is not possible which we have seen without law and order okay. Prashant, uh, right now you are uh, working in a very disciplined force. Yeah. Okay. So how many men are you commanding? So, commanding four fifty. Four fifty. That includes so, constable and subordinate officers. Okay. So do they uh, disobey you any time? Sir, uh, as of now they haven't disobeyed ever. Uh, I have never came across a act of disobey. So more or less, it's a very disciplined and order is taken very seriously. Any order is taken very seriously. Uh, generally, order is taken seriously in certain forces. Now you will be working in a kind of civilian setup, yes. okay? And uh, there are kind of they say there are lots of politics and all. Yes. Not every subordinate will be willing to follow you and all that. How are you going to adjust to the new setup? So, firstly, uh, I will have a self talk to myself that after getting into a civilian job. That I am not in the I am not in forces, so I am in a society uh, where I have to meet many types of people. Some may disobey, some may not. So even in a civilian job, if a person disobeys, there are many methods to make sure that the person work. So for me in forces, we might easily go to the aid of disciplinary acti activity or disciplinary proceedings when a person disobeys. But here I have many other a plethora of means I have here like motivation. Like talking to that person, like what actually went wrong? Why is he disobeying? So what is the past record of that person? And then accordingly, I can place that person as I've already told under theory X and theory Y. I can then move that person to another place rather than taking disciplinary proceedings in the first place. Okay. You were mentioning that uh, your temperament suits uh, a civilian job, or I mean, uh, suits better uh, for a role like duty collector. So, Okay. Now say uh, due to the ranking and all your scores and all, you are awarded. I mean, you are selected for municipal commissioner grade two. Would you be still? Would you still be taking that post since you are already an AC? Sir. Why and why not? Sir, I will be taking municipal commissioner grade two even if I got it. Because uh, sir, I feel the difference between a deputy collector and a municipal commissioner is about the territorial uh, extent that that is under them. So broadly, the uh, the mandate for both is same, but the territory under them is different. So just that the territory is less, but the municipal commissioner will I supposed to have the same temperament as, as a deputy collector should have. Okay, uh, in your current role as assistant commandant, uh, do you come under political pressure? Sir, very rarely, but yes, we come under political pressures. Okay, so what? Uh, just in case there is some uh, uh, pressure uh, and it's against the rule, what do you do in the present role? So, firstly, we'll try to explain. Uh, so, what exactly is the rule position? We not we won't just try to explain the rule position. We also try to explain that the present rule position is for the benefit of all. So, if uh, we we'll explain to the extent that. If we break the rule position now, it will have a slippery slope, and your busy business is going to hurt. The major political pressure there is about from the trade unions. So that is the major political. Pressure. So we'll explain them by saying that if a rule is if a rule is broken now, it will be beneficial for you now, but in the long run you will be hurt because the rule of law over there will will no longer be there, and the business is hurt. When the business is hurt, your trade unions itself will be hurt. So. Many times they are also sensible over there because the trade unions in Gujarat are a bit different. 
when compared to other trade unions. So okay. they try to understand. So now, uh, say you are selected again uh, in a, what is a, like a DC here. Uh, you are uh, on a day-to-day -day basis under uh, political pressure for good and bad reasons. Okay. So how do you handle it? Like uh, since you are not very used to political pressure. So firstly, I would like to analyze any situation, whether the political pressure uh, is a good pressure or a bad pressure. Not all political pressures are bad pressures. And secondly, uh, many a times even politicians when they try to pressure a bureaucrat, there might be some sort of ignorance or some sort of uh, misguiding that might happen. So we can clear many of their doubts if we can properly. And that also depends on the personal rapport that we maintain that with that politician. When I say this personal rapport, I'm saying that uh, when the politician knew and we can establish a trust that this bureaucrat's work is for my long term betterment, then they will definitely listen to us. Alright, there is a lot of criticism on a bureaucracy model of Weber. Alright, but it is still continuing everywhere. So why? So, the criticism on Weber's bureaucracy model is based on two factors. One is uh, it is too rule bound, and the second one is it is based on hierarchy. It is still continuing, but it is still continuing because it has its own relevance. So for all practical purposes, Weberian bureaucracy is the only existing system that a state can have to make sure that the system works. So we can't have, uh, uh, we can't have a model of uh, uh, chain system where there is no hierarchy, particularly in bureaucracy or particularly in a government structure. It is actually working. Uh, just that uh, bureaucrats uh, are too rule bound sometimes to secure themselves or sometimes uh, they stick to their rules to make sure that uh, it won't be rebound, the actions, the circumstances won't rebound. So that is the reason, main reason why there is criticism. But it is working so we still have to go with it. In the era of e governance, do we need bureaucracy in the model of bureaucracy? Sir, e-governance is a model, uh, e-governance is a process uh, that can solve some issues of uh, governance, but e-governance cannot replace bureaucracy as such. E-governance is just a means of bureaucracy, a hassle-free bureaucracy. So e-governance is not uh, that panacea for all the ends. So we still need bureaucracy. Again, you said uh, to one of, the, one of our panel, NGOs can go on this, I mean, governance can be done by others, not the government. So, why we need a bureaucratic model? So, I'm, what I'm, what I'm uh, saying over there is, uh, in the broad governance structure, in the broad process of governance, what NGOs does also comes under governance. But the very nature of NGOs work and the resources they have, uh, NGOs NGOs can just be a helping hand to the governments, but NGOs cannot run the government or NGOs cannot fill the whole space of governments. So NGOs are just a part of governments. Uh, the majority of the governments that we experience or that we witness today is by the government. In governance or any organization, uh, there are two problems. One is uh, information crunch and the one information overload. So, after re governance model, uh, what kind of problem is faced by that government? Uh, so, can you please uh, come up with your question? One is information crunch, another one information overload, right? Okay. So, as of now, what is that major problem? Whether it is information crunch or information overload? With respect to governance. Governance. So, it depends on the situation. Sometimes we are facing the problem of information crunch. And sometimes you are facing the problem of information overload. So when an incident happens, so there is a lot of information that comes up right from the media or right from the intelligence and right from the other departments. So we don't know which is credible. There the information overload comes up. And in the very process of information overload, we lack objective information. So there itself is information crunch. 
In the same situation, we have we experience both the phenomenon of information overload and information crunch. Who is, who is the proponent of uh, this theory, this theoretical understanding? Yeah, coming in separate. Who is that? Uh, who is the thinker who proposes this theory, this understanding? About the information. Information overload and information crunch of uh, the drop. Sorry, sir, I couldn't recall it. Right. Yeah, you run an NGO. Uh, sorry, I won't run an NGO. Uh, I'm part of an NGO where I participate uh, NGO. As of now, what are, those pro what are the problems for NGOs? Uh, so presently, NGOs are, f uh, at an NGO level, they're facing uh, resource level problems. NGOs have resource crunch. And sometimes they have credibility issues. NGOs run but they, they are not accountable and many times the NGOs spend a lot of money on administrative purposes rather than the core purposes that our NGOs are meant for. And at a broad level we have these FCRA issues that are coming up, the foreign contribution issues. So where the government is tightening up or in fact the government is asking the NGOs to strictly follow the FCRA rules. So that is one issue that is coming. Ramakrishna Mission, what kind of NGO? Uh, Ramakrishna Mission is a spiritual NGO. Spiritual or yeah. service oriented? Yeah, so as far as my knowledge goes, it is a spiritual NGO. Spiritual. Okay. And reading books, right? Yeah, reading non fiction. Non fiction. Okay. What is that last book you read? Uh, so the last book I read is about uh, a book written by Milan Vaishnava, the criminalization of politics in India. Criminalization. The role of uh, money and muscle in Indian politics. So again, which is related to your subject, public administration. So uh, criminalization is such a subject which concerns everyone. Sir, it's not about it's not about something concerned about him. It is more concerned about common man than a public administrator or. Okay. Uh, what kind of uh, criminalization of politics in other places you see? Uh, so, firstly, the number of uh, criminals entering legislatures and uh, criminals as power brokers uh, at a medium level. That is the other one. Uh, and the third one is criminal money that is being used for elections. These are the three main. Uh, Criminalization of politics uh, issues that we are facing in other countries. So, because of the criminalization of politics, uh, is there any new normals or new, I mean, social, do you observe any that kind of socialization of uh, criminal activities? Uh, sir, can you please come up with the question? Because of criminalization of politics, do you observe the element of socialization of criminal? Criminalization, criminal activities. So, criminal activities taking easily is what you are saying. Yeah, in society, no, we can normal, we can normal issues come out of it because of criminalization of politics. No, sir. Uh, people are still uh, uh, people are still aware of what a criminal activity is. People still doesn't want any criminal activity. People are still uh, very alarming about criminal activities. Uh, just because they are accepting criminals as politicians doesn't mean they are accepting crime as a new normal. I feel both these aspects are completely different. Is it close to that criminalization and socialization of criminal activity? So this incident is a very different incident, is a very unique incident. So had this incident not been given that much of media hype or media publicity or uh, had this incident not been uh, created so much of emotional fervor in the society, people wouldn't have asked for it. So every day we are, we know that a lot of crimes are happening and it is just a number for us. But when an incident is being highlighted in media so much so that it creates emotional fervor among people, then people on an emotional basis or on a temporary basis are asking for it. Not that it is a new normal. If it is a new normal, then they would have asked for every rape. They would have responded the, the same for every rape, but which is not happening. Sir. 
సార్ కౌబిజిలెంటిజం ఇదంతా కూడా ఒక ఫ్రింజ్ యాక్టివిటీ చేస్తున్న యాక్టివిటీ ఒక ఫ్రింజ్ గ్రూప్ చేస్తున్న యాక్టివిటీ వీ కాన్ సే దట్ సమ్ ఇన్సిడెంట్స్ హ్యాపనింగ్ సమ్వేర్ అండ్ వీ కాన్ జనరలైజ్ ఇట్ యాజ్ అ క్యారెక్టరిస్టిక్ ఆఫ్ పబ్లిక్ ఆర్ సొసైటీ లార్జ్లీ పబ్లిక్ పీస్ లవింగ్ లార్జ్లీ పబ్లిక్ నీడ్ పీస్ so you have mentioned jogging sorry as one of your interests sir you know so can you differentiate between uh, jogging and running one and to what is more beneficial jogging or running so i say go for 5 km jog and 5 km uh, run which is more beneficial uh, so the major difference between jogging and running is about the pace so if we increase a pace Uh, it will become running so running will have uh, running will ex witness more heart rate but jogging a medium heart rate so when which is beneficial for whether it is jogging or running i feel both are beneficial it depends on our capacity what we can do um i have a couple of questions uh, one is <coughs> we often notice that uh, the last mile service the final service uh at government level but the state government is not up to the mark and there is a lot to be improved uh, one of the reasons is because of job security you know every government servant is secured of his job and you know, the promotions happen only based on as opposed to private sector where it's performance based what do you think about the idea of introducing performance based promotions into government service so the idea of performance based promotions is a good idea so firstly but before implementing the performance based uh, promotions we need to have some objective measures on which we can measure the performance itself which we don't have and which is difficult to have in a government setup because a private uh, organization works on some objective basis they have they can actually calculate the work which they are doing but in government we can't calculate uh what amount of work they are doing or what quality they are doing so that is a major hurdle in that but still we can implement in some sectors like health sector wherein we can uh, we can actually analyze the uh, evaluate the performance of doctors on the number of outpatients they are uh, taking and the number of inpatients they are taking number of surgeries and number of successful surgeries they are taking in such cases we can go for but not in every case so uh, i would like to give another example where for example if a police officer averts a certain thing from happening a police officer so there is no product of it he is just preventing some crime from happening so how can we evaluate it or how can we objectively assess it and how, and what amount of points that we can give to a to an activity which prevents certain thing number of crime incidents in comparison to previous year Reduction, 20% reduction, 50% reduction. Sir, if you go for the uh, number of crime incidents, then there will be under-reporting. Then the police might go for settling the uh, issues within the police station without recording them. In that case, it is more dangerous in the name of performance-based uh, promotions. Okay. Now, one more question. It's a, no. Let's assume that you were... Uh, one of the officer in charge for transporting those four uh, not comrades accused of the charred case and you got orders from your senior um, and there is obviously a public outrage there is media pressure uh, and your officers are also willing to commit the act of encountering them what would be uh, what how would you handle that would you go with that would you stop them uh, sir can you please uh, tell me what exactly is the designation of mine in that things uh dcp okay uh so firstly i wouldn't go for it uh, i wouldn't go for it. and uh, i would like to explain the consequences firstly to my superior so what are the consequences that are going to be and there are many incidents where 
these incidents are proven fake and there are some repercussions also so i would like to cherry pick those incidents and put them before and if that person is still not listening to me then i would like to tell the same thing to my subordinates okay so i can easily at that point create some form of fear among the subordinates by telling that their job their job life is at stake not just their professional life their personal life is also at stake then without that confidence my the whole plan might not go forward okay um then uh, two questions from my side so uh, ngo was receive lot of foreign funding many ngos they receive foreign funding from uh, abroad so and there are many allegations that they are being uh, misused for doing uh, some other activities sometimes the funds are going missing for uh, anti national success so what's your opinion on the policy of uh, government to control it them like whether the government should freely allow them to get the funds and make some sort of uh, uh, controls so that it will not get uh, misused how do you think that it should be entirely banned sir firstly i don't agree to the idea of entirely banning the foreign funding and secondly while receiving the foreign funding be it anti national activity or anti development activity so these two terms are very subjective in nature so what might seem anti national for me is not an anti national for not for others so sometimes it is easy to brand it as an anti national to make sure that these ngos won't work also and secondly when it is taken as anti development we should also firstly define what is development if an ngo is asking for environmental regulations over for a project is fighting for it because of which a project is stalled they are also going for development but they are they are asking for sustainable development not for a development that is going to pollute and not a not a development model which is not safe for our future generations to live so here government should have two phases firstly it should be very uh, strict with respect to expecting the ngos to maintain their records and their spending and the second thing is the government should be very broad minded while defining what is anti development they should this the governments should also accept few activities of ngos which might seem anti development but no they are working for sustainable development no uh, let me be specific so you are posted as deputy superintendent of police in a in a division so you received a complaint saying that one ngo has uh, diverted the funds for doing anti national i mean used for criminal activities so i am funding some terrorist organizations sir so, whether you will stick to the same stand that you are taking now or what you are going to deal with that uh, complaint something that in, that is pertaining to anti national and criminal activity is of course not tolerable not tolerable sir so firstly i'll go for it i will ask for an objective report on it there should be some proof if not a solid proof there should be some element of proof that should be there to substantiate it even if there is no proof if the person who is uh, intimating that is a credible person is in the good books of mine is a credible trust as a person of trust then i will then order for an informal inquiry within with my missionary so if it is uh, happening then i will produce the evidence and make sure that the ngo is banned whether the police has got powers to investigate if cra violations so the police doesn't have the power to directly ask for the books of fcra but with the intelligence with the specific state intelligence which is uh, top notch intelligence the state intelligence is considered to be top notch intelligence with that the police can get information whether the funds are being diverted for criminal activities or not no if fcra is violated which is the agency empowered to investigate uh, sorry sir i am not aware of the fact fact so cb um thank you sir. and another uh, last question from my side there is a long pending demand from uniform services to give them magisterial powers what's your opinion on that so uh, which uniform services here in the central police or state police state law and order is uh, to be more specific law and order police okay. 
Sir, uh, I don't support the idea of giving vegetarian powers to police. Uh, for two reasons. Firstly, the police are already overburdened. Actually, there are some aspects of police which are supposed to be taken from the police, from the regular police and give them to uh, special units, be it investigation or be it uh, community policing. So, that is one thing. And uh, giving magisterial powers uh, will actually sometimes create conflict of interest among police. Among police so, I won't support it. Okay. Self from outside. Thank you, Prashant. Thank you, sir. All the best. Thank you, sir. Overall interview, bond, Prashant. Yes, sir. Only thing is that you, being already in the service zone, are but you do come here deputy superintendent of police first option in the petrol line, do. And that is, of course, question raw, sir. So, that is, ye answer the pala, that is. जनरलेंटेश uh, uh, so life will be more yeah. diversified and life will be full with more diversified experiences like in the IAS officers even they work for tax departments, they work for developmental departments, they work for welfare activity. So once in two years or something like that, the transfers to the needs for the scope of life will be more diversified. Yes, sir. 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 I took their opinion and put it in the bottom. सेकेंड ऑप्शन के अंदर ये नो जब डीएसपी पेट आना जब आने ना टेम्परमेंटिक सूट का दाने आंसर नहीं चेपने को डोल दें तो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन कम्स तो इफ दैट वन सूट क्यों मेरे इंदु कुमारी यास्टेन का मैंने डे जस्ट ना रूप सूट का रूप इंदु रिजाइन जेले दो आनोस्तर सो आदि दान के टेकोड़ा इस इस वो कैसे � I took four or five members' opinions and all of them they suggested like that. I will show you the first question. That is the right thing that will appear. Sure, sir. Thank you. Sir, then that Sir, then that Sir, then that Sir, then that General suggestions me district Vijayanagar Guruji have prepared that is Chappal Yama. They may ask about the history, geography, from the industry is allowed like that. It will be a great occasion. पोर्ट लो भी राले बच्चे सुना गया बट एक पोर्ट सुन ची कौन का इनफॉरमेशन आ रहा बच्चू हाँ मैंने पोर्ट्स आ गया वॉल्यूम ऑफ ट्रेड बाइस का ये पोर्ट एक वो मेटल हैंडल चेंज चौने पर डाल गया आवकास मंदी ये डिपार्टमेंट्स तो ये रिक्वायरमेंट चेस तुम चेस तुम डाल में दी Question repeat chairman are you going to put if you don't mind or not again? If you don't mind, can you repeat the question, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, please. No, no, no. It happens. If you don't mind, sir, can I get the question again? Can you repeat again? Can I get the question back again? It is a more refined way of asking. Can I get the question again, sir? And then, go on to it, sir. I think we can learn the kitchen suggestions like each and first enter out to me. बहुत अच्छा नेट मेरे एंट्री गानी स्माइलिंग कैसा हो चारों हो चारों पास्ट मेरे यू विश दी चेयरमैन जनरल के चेयरमैन विल बी विल बी दी मोर नेट फर्स्ट आवान दी इक्वल्स सो फर्स्ट यू विश दी चेयरमैन लेडी मेंबर्स उन्हें एंड वाला का फर्स्ट विश चेंज नेक्स्ट चेयरमैन विश चेंज इंतज़ार तो लेडी मेंबर्स प्रोटा कल प्रकार में कंपासरी चेंज इधर उठी इधर की चेंज गुड मॉर्निंग मैडम गुड मॉर्निंग मैडम जी तो आता है तो मिडिल मेंबर्स अंदर एक खुड़ा यंत्रांतर अंदरवाज़े खुड़ा � अगर आपने बहुत जब स्लोग अटला एक्सिट वर्क को बोला आ रेस्पेक्ट करने की डील चुनी चल शो सेट्स व्हाट अटे वन ही एंड अटे पॉल हिम अटे बॉडी बिहेवियर यू हैव टू टेक्स अंड इट ड्यूस मंच इम्प्रेशन इंस्टेड ऑफ शोइंग योर बैक एक्सिट आया था पुरु 
ఫేస్ టర్న్ చేసేసి డోర్ క్లోజ్ చేసి చూడండి బ్యాచ్ చూస్తే ఎంటర్ ఎగ్జిట్ అవుతుంది ఇట్ ఈస్ నాట్ ఏ గుడ్ మేనర్స్ బ్యాడ్ అంటే జస్ట్ యూ షో ది అంటే మీ ఫ్రెండ్స్ సైడ్ అంటే వెనక్కి తిరిగి వీలైతే డోర్ దగ్గరికి ఒక పెద్ద డోర్ పెద్ద హాల్ ఉంటే ఎందుకంటే డోర్ దగ్గరికి వెళ్ళేటప్పటికి లాస్ట్లో కూడా ప్యానల్కి నమస్కారం పెట్టేసేసి డోర్ మెల్లగా క్లోజ్ చేసుకుని బయటికి వెనక్కి నచ్చుకుంటే వెళ్ళిపోండి ఇది అడ్వైజ్ పోతుంది ఒక్కోసారి అవే మీకు రెండు మాటలు ఎక్కువ పడతాయి వెరీ వెరీ అంటే గమనిస్తున్నా గమనించకపోయినా వాళ్ళు సపోజ్ మీరు ఆ డోర్ దగ్గరికి వెళ్ళేసరికి ఎవరు గమనించలేకపోయినా కూడా మీరు చేయాల్సిన పని చేయండి ఎందుకంటే ఐదు మంది ప్యానల్ మెంబర్స్ లో ఒకరు చూసినా కానీ ఇట్ విల్ హ్యావ్ ఇంపాక్ట్ ఇది ఇట్ మేక్స్ డిఫరెన్స్ ఫ్రమ్ అదర్ క్యాండిడేట్స్ ఒకసారి సమ్టైమ్స్ ఇదే ఇంప్రెషన్స్ ఇంప్రెషన్స్ తో మార్పులు పడేవి ఉంటాయి ఈ ప్యానల్ లో దే డోంట్ ఎక్స్పెక్ట్ యూ టు బి వెరీ ఇదే బట్ ఇవన్నీ ఓహో గుడ్ మ్యానర్డ్ బాయ్ అవన్నీ కూడా చూస్తారు అదర్ దాన్ దట్ ఐ థింక్ యువర్ ప్రిపరేషన్ ఇస్ వెల్ అనిపించింది సార్ మెజర్డ్ రెస్పాన్సెస్ అంతకంటే <laughs> 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 మనం ఆన్సర్ చేసేటప్పుడు తను సీరియస్లీ వాంట్ థింక్ కొంచెం కింద చూసి థింక్ చేసాను నాకు తెలియదు is it that is adini actually chesanu is it that is odd ga anpinchinda le 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 you can ask the time and the uh, if the uh, honorable board pleases can i have a minute for thinking sir and i will come to choose actually think chesa chesko is it stop there is nothing kadu mosnu kuda cheskochu there is nothing wrong odd ga it like go kada matta tu cheyakunda yes odd behavior lekuna cheskondi there is nothing wrong ఇప్పుడు ఏ విధంగా అయితే మీరు చేశారో దట్ ఈస్ ఫైన్ అండి స్టిక్ టు దట్ అంతే ఎక్సెప్ట్ దిస్ స్మాల్ మేనర్స్ అంటే కొంచెం లైక్ అంటే ఇఫ్ యూ డాంట్ మైండ్ చెన్నై క్వశ్చన్ బ్యాక్ సార్ డోర్ క్లోజ్ చేసుకుని వెళ్ళిపోయేటప్పుడు అది డోర్ క్లోజ్ చేసుకుని బయటికి వెళ్ళిపోయిన తర్వాత ఇంక పెద్ద దీని ఉండదు బట్ యువర్ ఎగ్జిట్ ఆల్సో ఇట్ మ్యాటర్స్ అట్లాగే సో అది కూడా అబ్జర్వ్ చేయొచ్చు దట్ ఈస్ ఎ పాసిబిలిటీ how he bears ah i believe interview in jump ani ana type unda kudadu anamata the rate ivi e matter chinna matter ayipochu suppose general evarana indicate cheyalante ayi illu baagunda ledha chodalante em cheyalante vala one room bathroom lala kada chusara aa vidhanga simple maa hall avani neat ga decorate chestaru but if you see really their establishment uh, you have to see these two things atlage exit ayyatapudu how you ayipena na interview ala esa star like they will form an opinion anamata kaakunda exit ayyatapudu kuda you are not at a you are wishing the board not the individuals are staying there so you okay okay authority ni you are respecting and the individuals ga edo man please chestunnaru vallu edo batmana atle kada it is respect please chant bound it 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 it, uh, it helps a lot but migilinda anta vachesi baagundandi you can stick to that and koncham mee job gurinchi ekku prepare kandi maa kada idea ledhi actually serious sir gurinchi but i think subject wise the political science i think is okay is good sir so job gurinchi questions ekko port gurinchi emana smuggling activities etc what gurinchi adite ganaka you can tell some crimes gurinchi what sort of crimes you notice then sure like you can tell you know deep with chapandi sure sir 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 enter ayinappudu actually good morning sir cheppadam ganna జైన్ సార్ అని చెప్పడం అట్లా ఉంటుంది సార్ బికాస్ మీరు యూనిఫామ్ సర్వీసెస్ నుంచి కాబట్టి చెప్పవచ్చు దర్ ఇస్ నథింగ్ బట్ ఐ డోంట్ థింక్ జనరల్ గా ఏంటంటే యూనిఫామ్ సర్వీసెస్ వాళ్ళు 
సెల్యూట్ కూడా చేస్తారు మా బ్యాచ్ లో కొంతమంది ఆల్రెడీ పోలీస్ ఎస్ఐస్ గా కవర్ చేసిన సెల్యూట్ చేశారు నార్మల్ మీ యూనిఫామ్ సెల్యూట్ చేస్తారు పోలీస్ అట్లా కూడా చేస్తారు ఇప్పుడు బాగానే అనిపించిందండి ఒకవేళ ఫీల్ గట్ అది కూడా అవసరం లేదనుకుంటే సింపుల్ గా ఉంది సార్ ఇప్పుడు మనకి సార్ ఏం బాగా మీరు యూనిఫామ్ వేసుకొని వెళ్ళారు కదా కాబట్టి దెర్ ఇస్ నో నీడ్ ఫర్ యూ టు బిస్ డెమ్ లైక్ దట్ అన్లెస్ ది పేరల్ చైర్మన్ ఈస్ ఫ్రమ్ పోలీస్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ అంతకుముందు ఎపిపిఎస్సి చైర్మన్స్ గా డిఐజీస్ రిటైర్డ్ డిఐజీస్ అలా ఉండేవాడు ఇప్పుడు మా జరిగిన ఇంటర్వ్యూలో కాబట్టి బహుశా ఆల్రెడీ జాబ్ లో ఉన్నటువంటి వాళ్ళు అలాగే విష్ చేశారని తెలియదు ఇప్పుడు ఈ వీక్ మీరు అది విష్ చేయొచ్చు బట్ అయితే అలాంటప్పుడు మీకు యూనిఫామ్ మీద ఎక్కువ క్వశ్చన్స్ పడతాయి పొలిటికల్ సైన్స్ వీటి కంటే Why not? If you want to ask anything else, I don't think you need uh, much uh, inputs. But if you want to do anything, you can repeat it. It's small, these things are kind of sure. stuff. So, if you want to check it out, you have a general suggestion. If you want to get an interview in the morning, you better take soft food. So, you can get a nice food, you can get a spicy food, you can get a spicy food. So, that if you want to get an interview, if you want to get an interview, it will be a problem. We like the vegetarian food. this one and it shows you go well in time at least half an hour to one hour mundu velandi because there will be certain formalities to be observed there like signing and when you go outside oka one hour mundu akkada unde data plan cheyandi hot place kaabatti vijayawada better you engage a air conditioned vehicle and go there feel and go enda lo unnadanni avoid cheyandi endukante sweating ekku untadu kaabatti body smell bite ga vachu bite ante panel varaku smell raakovachu kaani meeke vachindi anukunte it shows you will be uncomfortable your mind may not feel yeah, fresh so we leave tarku enda lo anukunda akkada waiting hall lo air conditioning untundi you sit there we leave tarku middle in advance candidates to engage kaagapodam better because all opinions may influence your opinion బయట ఇంటర్వ్యూ అయ్యి వచ్చిన తర్వాత కాదండి ఎందుకంటే యూ కెన్ బట్ బిహేవియర్ కూడా బిహేవియర్ యాజ్ ఎక్స్పెక్టెడ్ ఫ్రమ్ ఏ సీనియర్ ఆఫీసర్ లైఫ్ ఎలా ఉండాలో అలా చిన్న పిల్లలు అనేది ఏదో గ్రూప్ చేసుకుంటే అలా ఉండకండి ఈ సార్ ద థింగ్స్ యూ కెన్ ఫాలో ఆ తర్వాత అంతే కదా సార్ ఇంకా మిగిలిన మొదటి చిన్న సజెషన్స్ ఇవి ఎందుకంటే ఇంకా మంచి ఎన్విరాన్మెంట్ లో మీరు ఉండేటట్టుగా అట్లా చేసుకోండి తలుపు వేసేది తీసేది మాత్రం వీకే సాఫ్ట్ పడాలని తెలుగు తెలుసుకుని వెళ్ళిపోవడం అట్లా వద్దు సాఫ్ట్ గా నేను వేసేసి వస్తున్నాను మీకు చెప్పేవి ఫర్మ్ గానే చెప్పండి యూ నీడ్ నాట్ బి హార్ష్ టువర్డ్స్ ది బి కాన్ఫిడెంట్ అండ్ ఫర్మ్ ఇన్ యువర్ ఒపీనియన్స్ ఇఫ్ యూ డో నాట్ నో యూర్ ఆన్సర్ డోంట్ ఆన్సర్ ఐ సే దట్ సార్ ఐ ఎమ్ సారీ డోంట్ హ్యావ్ మచ్ నాలెడ్జ్ అబౌట్ దట్ వన్ అని చెప్పేసింది అంటే ప్యానల్ ని ఎడ్యుకేట్ చేయడానికి ప్రయత్నం చేయకండి మీకు నాలెడ్జ్ అంతా కమ్ చేయడానికి ఇప్పుడు వరకు అయితే మీరు చేయలేదు బాగానే ఉంది మిగిలిన క్యాండిడేట్స్ లో కొంత అబ్జర్వ్ చేశాను అలాంటిది పొరపాటున ఆ రోజు చేయకండి సర్ప్రైజ్ క్వశ్చన్స్ వచ్చేటువంటి అవకాశాలు కూడా ఉండొచ్చు ఎందుకంటే ఆల్రెడీ మంచి జాబ్ చేస్తున్నావు కదా అసిస్టెంట్ గా మేనేజ్ చేస్తున్నావు లెట్ సమ్ నీడ్ ఫెలో టేక్ ఇట్ అన్నాడు అనుకోండి ఏం చెప్తారు మీరు జాబ్ ఈస్ నాట్ సపోజ్ ఫర్ డిడి పర్సన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ సపోజ్ ఫర్ ఎలిజిబుల్ పర్సన్ అట్లా చెప్పొచ్చు లేదంటే ఇంకా సార్ ప్రాస్పెక్ట్స్ వైజ్ ఉన్న జాబ్ కంటే ఏంటి ఇది బెటర్ ప్రాస్పెక్ట్స్ ఉన్నట్టు కనిపించింది అండి మోర్ డైవర్సిఫైడ్ ఆపర్చునిటీస్ ఉన్నట్టు కనిపించింది ఆర్డియో ఐ థాట్ టు లెట్ మీ ట్రై అనిపించింది ట్రై అంతే ఎస్సీ క్లోజ్ చేసింది ఎక్కువ కాంట్రవర్షియల్ ఇష్యూస్ లో ఎక్కువ వెళ్ళకండి మిగిలిన విషయంలో కూడా మీ మీకు ఇది వైజాగ్ దగ్గర వచ్చేది ఉంది అవకాశం లేదు క్యాపిటల్ వైజాగ్ దగ్గర వచ్చేది ఏం చెప్తారు సమాధానం అమరావతి నుంచి వైజాగ్ క్యాపిటల్ షిఫ్ట్ చేస్తే బెటర్ అంటారా ఏంటని అంటే మీరు ఏం చెప్తారు సగం కాంట్రవర్షియల్ ఇష్యూస్ సార్ ఐ సపోర్ట్ ఐ సపోర్ట్ షిఫ్టింగ్ క్యాపిటల్ ఫ్రమ్ అమరావతి టు వైజాగ్ బట్ it should also be followed by a policy that the capital we should also should not repeat the mistake of hyderabad model capital like 
capital should be for administrative purpose, not as a center of sole center of development. So the capital can be shifted to Vizag. Every district or every center of every urban center should become their own models of development. Not that the Vizag should be the sole center of development. Okay. Sir, where are the precise names which are not taken? Actually, a decentralized administration will set better sovereignty. Okay. 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 Maximum governance, minimum government model better. And mature democracy is like a government. Then you have a visible kind of it. Capital shift is the same. Capital shift is the same. Development is the same. I don't think. Because uh, Development will come on more other and different other factors like uh, industry development, agricultural, scientific developments, this crowd, human resources development, EV more development rather than shifting any EV. EV achieves the capital economy doesn't matter on the best chapter. Because panel law, you are very clever. You are not answering the balance of the answer. Don't take a clear stand up for okay, sir, I support the shifting to Visa. Another further questions for the VLA on the channel. If you have a side loan, you can see the expand garden, you can see the side of the corner. Where do you get expansion? Because more expensive city, the normal person is allowed to get the other people. Everything has to be imported here. Whatever you want to do, you can see the side of 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 the side. Permanent water sources are not better than Krishna River Pakkan. Even unnecessary. Everybody has got their own point of view in support and against it. That's why the government is the best. That's why the matter is that the government is the best. Even the government is the best. 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 The focus is the best. The government 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 is the best. People are the best. The government is the best. The best. In the digital era, it doesn't matter where the things lie. Where the services are available are important. That's why it's important to challenge the challenge. Even the US plus states are taken, sir. New York and Washington are taken. Cities are capital variables, sir. Simple. That's why it's important. Only capital is developed. It may not be... It's more administrative purpose than financial. Which is closed. Of course, there are discussions about that. Controversial issues, sir. Don't take a clear stand. The unadvantage is that you need to do the unadvantage. It's like a slow jet. Other than the team, you need to do the controversial issues. Except the capital. You need to do the districts. You need to do the name. You need to do the name. You need to do the political name. You need to do the 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 name. Even when you have a corner district issue. So, that's why I have a question. Is the name and the name and the name and the name? Right. Even the controversial issues. The panel is trying to corner you. Controversial issues are the aim stand. Controversial issues are the best solution is to not to take a... Not to take a stand. Neither taking stand of A or B. Taking a stand C. Stand C and D. That's why the important issue is about development here is important. Nobody can say. Better go like that. If you don't know what you're talking about, you can easily answer. Sir, what's the question? All the best. Yes, sir. Thanks.